Thank you for joining me for this latest installment in the What's New in Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2013 video series. In this video, we're going to focus on the new query object as well as the new generic chart builder. We're actually going to build our own query and then use that query as part of a three-dimensional chart on the role center. So let's get started. I've opened up the development environment in Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2013. I'm going to open up the object designer and you'll notice that I've selected the query object which is new to Dynamics NAV 2013 and let's go create our first query. Let's keep this one simple and just do a query joining sales header and sales line. So the first thing I need to do is select my first data item and my first data source would be sales header. I'm then going to go select some columns from the sales header table Let's do document type, sell to customer number, the sales header number. Let's do posting date, amount, and the final one, let's do salesperson code. You'll notice there is a option over here for method type. If I select that, I have the option of none, date, or totals. Well, for posting date, I'm going to select date. That opens up a new method of day, month, or year for any method type of date. I'm going to leave this one at day. For the amount, I'm going to select a method type of totals, and that opens up a new method of sum, count, average, min, or max. In this case, I'm going to leave it to sum. And since we're creating a query and we want to join multiple tables, the next thing I'm going to need is my next date item that I want to join with the sales header. So that, in this case, is going to be the sales line table. So when you select the properties of the second date item, you can define the date item link which connects the tables together. So I'm going to select document type from the sales line. And I'm going to show how that connects to the sales header table. Do the same for document number. We have now created the relationship between the two tables. The data item link type, you'll see the default value is use default values if no match. You can also exclude rows if no match. But then if I select SQL advanced options, it it shows a new property called SQL join type. Here you can indicate whether it's a left outer join, inner join, right outer join, full outer join, or cross join. In this case, I'm just going to use the default because I'm doing a very simple query. But I could also go in and set table filters. So for instance, if I wanted to set a table filter where I only wanted my query to return results if the uh, document type was order, you could do that here in the data item table filter. For this example, we're going to demonstrate how we can set our filter when we go build our generic chart with the chart builder. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that undefined right now. The last thing we need to do here to finish off this query is we need to go add some columns or fields here. And we're going to add type. Obviously, we're going to add number. I'd like quantity as part of my query. And I think location code would be another good field to have here. The one thing we're going to need to do before we can compile this is because we have a common field name between the sales header and the sales line, I need to change my name to something other than the default value for one of these fields. And that's what I'm going to do here. Indicate that this is the document number for the sales header. So now if I close this, compile it, I'm going to assign it number 50,000. I'm going to call it something very simple. And voila, we've created our first query. And now if I hit run, You'll notice that it opens up a page and returns the query results. 
Now let's go use this query and build our first chart using the generic chart builder in Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2013. The first thing we need to do is open up the Windows client for Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2013. To go build our chart, we need to go to Departments. Under Administration, we would go to Roll Taylor Client. We would select Charts. And here's where we access all of the existing charts, as well as where we would go to build a new chart. If I click New, You'll notice that it opens up the generic chart setup, so we can go build our first chart. First, I'm going to give it an ID. I'm going to give it a name. I'm just going to keep it very simple. Our source type, we have the choice of both table or query. In this case, I'm going to pick query and select the query that I just made. We can set a filter. So I want to just return orders of document type order, and obviously not any quotes or invoices. So I can set my filter right here. We could have set that on the query, but in this case I returned all the results in the query, and I'm using the filter here in the chart to narrow down the uh, result set. Here I'm going to select quantity an aggregation of sum, a graph type of column, and you'll notice you have all of these different choices of aggregation, all of these different choices of graph type. Along the x-axis, I'm going to select salesperson code. Or actually, no, in this case, I'm going to select number, and I think on the z-axis, I'll do salesperson code. We could set a chart description, and it will give a preview down here of what your chart will look like. And I'll collapse some of these so you can see a little bit more what the chart type I've selected and what that will look like. Don't worry about the fact that it shows these category placeholders along the um, X and Z axis. When you actually render this in a page, it will show the proper labels. So I'm going to hit OK. Now let's go to my Roll Center home page. I'm going to customize the page. I'm going to add my chart part, and I'm going to remove a few parts just because I want my chart to display bigger. I'm going to click on my blank chart. I'm going to customize it. Select the new chart I've just created, hit OK, and you'll notice that it has rendered my new chart I've created using my query. So that concludes our second installment in the video series, What's New in Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2013. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter. Please follow my blog or join us on YouTube. And I look forward to having you join us again for a future installment of What's New in Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2013.